Hi everyone! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show. Today we have an absolutely gorgeous project for you. We are going to make a lightweight hooded scarf that's right out of a magical fairy tale. We're going to use Show on the Ball by Lion Brand and we'd like to thank Lion Brand Yarns for sponsoring today's video. If you've never had a chance to work with Shawl on a Ball, we've put a link directly to Lion Brand's website down there in the description box. You can pop over and check out all the beautiful colorways that the Shawl on a Ball comes in. I feel like Shawl on a Ball almost has magical qualities of its own. It's got this really nifty little crimp to it that gives the yarn a little bit more boost and flexibility when you work it into a pattern. It's got a little sparkle that runs through it. I love the undulating prismatic colors in the colorways and it's an acrylic wool blend so it's a lot warmer than it looks. It's lightweight, but it's not cold by any stretch. It's also not itchy. I could probably wear this thing around my face for hours. Hooded scarves are a great winter accessory. They can act as a scarf and they can keep your head warm too. They look really neat down, they look really neat up, and the nice thing about a hooded scarf as opposed to just trying to wrap a scarf or a shawl around your head is that the hood part actually has a seam at the back that keeps your, the back of your head and your neck all nice and cozy and warm. You can wrap this thing around your neck, you can tuck it into your sweater, your jacket, you can even pull the ends back around and tuck them underneath the rest of your scarf. Oh, and it just feels so nice and your head's all nice and cozy warm and your ears are covered and you look really pretty too. <laughs> so, let's grab our hooks, grab our shawl and a ball, we'll head on over to the craft table, and let's stitch it up together. In order to make today's hooded scarf, I'm using a single ball of Lion Brand Shawl in a Ball. This one is called Prism. It's a really beautiful self-striping yarn. Each ball is an acrylic wool blend with a little bit of shiny sparkly tinsel running through it. It's 150 grams or 431 yards and it's considered a size for medium weight yarn because of this textured little squiggle that runs through it even though the yarn itself looks a bit skinnier than normal. But I'm going to talk a bit more about that in a moment. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and the hook I'm using is a 5.5 millimeter, also known as an I or a 9 in the US, a size 5 in the UK. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please take a moment to hit that button and the bell so you never miss another episode. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. The shawl in a ball has a really unique texture to it. You can see there's a little bit of a squiggle to the yarn. It does tend to make your stitches look a little different than you might be used to seeing. So if you've never worked with textured yarn, I took the liberty of working up a little sampler so you can get an idea of what that V-stitch is going to look like a few rows in. Also, it's got this pretty little delicate band of sparkle that runs through it. It's separate from the rest of the yarn. So as you're working, be sure not to stick your hook in between the sparkle strand and the rest of the yarn because you don't want to split the two. So make sure they're both going over your hook as you work. We're going to begin with a slip knot. Then we're going to create a long foundation chain because we're going to be working our scarves from left to right long ways. So we're going to chain 247. So just take your time and make sure you count as you go. You want 247 chains. 247 chains is quite a lot, so if it helps, you might want to put a little marker every 50 or every 20 chains or so, just to sort of facilitate counting a little faster or make it easier when you want to make sure that you've got the right number of chains. I'll remove my stitch markers as I go. 247 chains is a multiple of three plus one. So if you wanted to make your scarf a little longer or a little shorter, the foundation chain row needs to be a multiple of three chains, any multiple at all, plus one extra chain at the end. So 247 is 246 plus one. The 246 being the perfect multiple of three and number 247 is the plus one. Long foundation chain rows can twist on you. So we're just going to worry about the first few chains and we're gonna take it three chains at a time as we work down the foundation chain row length. So this could 
technically be the longest part of the pattern for you. We're going to find the first chain from the hook, there it is there, and we're going to count back to the fifth. So one, two, three, four, here's number five, right here. Fifth chain from the hook. We're going to work a double crochet V stitch into that fifth chain. So try not to split your yarn. I'm going to double crochet, chain one and double crochet all into that same chain. So take it nice and easy to start. Things will speed up once we get a few rows in. So we've double crochet, chain one, double crochet, or double crochet V stitched into the fifth chain from the hook, and that gives us a turning chain of three and a little one spacer here, and I'll explain that a little bit more as we go. So don't worry about your foundation chain trying to twist on you. All you want to do is just identify the next three chains. So they look like that. There's one, two, and three. Take the third one and V-stitch into it. So skip two chains and work a double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the third chain. Remember, you want to try and keep your stitches or your tension nice and casual. You don't want to be tight. If you find you're tightening up, switch to a larger hook. So that's two V stitches. Find the next three stitches. So there's chain one, chain two, and chain three. You can sort of see. Might take a little bit of looking. You want to make sure you've got three chains, you're skipping two, and you're working into the third. Double crochet, chain one, double crochet, into that same stitch or chain. All right, next three, there's one, two, three. I'm going to skip two chains and double crochet, chain one, double crochet, into the third chain. Same thing, kind of run your thumb and forefinger over it. There's one, two, third chain. So one, two, three, skip two and V-stitch into the third chain. And you're just gonna repeat that all the way down your long foundation chain row. Take your time, put your feet up, pay close attention to your chains so that you're not skipping any. You wanna work a V-stitch into every third chain all the way along. So just concern yourself with the next three chains at a time. Don't worry about the rest of the length of that foundation chain row. When you get all the way to the end of your first row, you should have two chains left. You should also have 81 V stitches. Now that does not include your little turning chain space at the beginning. So that's your first V stitch. You should have 81 and you should have two chains left. Now if there's any grumbling out there and you had three chains left or you only had one chain left, don't worry. The beauty of this kind of textured yarn means that you can cheat <laughs> and nobody's going to notice. So you're going to skip the last chain and just double crochet, or I should say skip the second last chain and double crochet into the last chain. So if you've only got one chain left, double crochet into it. If you have three chains left, skip two and double crochet into the last chain. So that's what you wanna do. You wanna have 81 V stitches You'll have 81 V stitches in every row, and every row will have a post at the beginning and the end. So if you made it through your first row, congratulations, that was the longest and most difficult part of the pattern. Everything going forward is a lot simpler. So take a moment, make sure you've got 81 V stitches. At the end of every row, we're going to chain three and turn. The chain three at the end of every row counts as a double crochet for the beginning of the next row. So chain three, turn, and that chain three becomes the double crochet or the post at the beginning of the next row. So it sits right on top of the post from the previous row. Now, all you need to do is worry about finding V-stitches. So if you pull it apart, you can clearly see where the V's are. Here is your first V-stitch. Don't be confused by the spaces in between. The spaces in between are gonna look a little square 
but the V stitches are very clearly going to be double crochet, chain one, double crochet. So you find the middle of the first V stitch and work a V stitch into it. Double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. And you're working right into the space. You're not working into the chain or a piece of the stitch, right into the space. Find the next V stitch. Here it is here. Double crochet, chain one, and double crochet. There's the first two V stitches, and you can see that the V stitches are all sitting on top of the V stitch from the row before. So find the next V stitch and work a V stitch into that. So all you have to do now is just work a V stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, into the middle of every single V stitch across. So you'll still have 81 V stitches at the end of row two, or any row. And the row will begin with chains, so three chains that counts as a double crochet, and it'll end with a double crochet too. But I'll show you that when we get there. So just take your time, work a V stitch into the middle of every V stitch from the row before, and very soon the pattern will start to be a lot easier to work. When you get to the end of row two, You'll work your last or your 81st V-stitch into the top of the V-stitch from the row before, and that leaves you with all those turning chains, those four turning chains that we had at the beginning of row one. So this is the only time it's gonna look a little funny, but you are looking for the top of the chain three that begins every row when you get across to the end of it. So there's one little chain separating it from the chain three that is acting as a double crochet from the beginning of row one. So all you're going to do is skip over the top of the double crochet of the last V stitch, find the chain right next to it, and double crochet into the top of it. Just get your hook in there anywhere it'll go. So every row begins and ends with a post. It's either a chain three or a double crochet. You've got 81 Vs running across the length of every single row, and it looks like that. So a simple stitch, but a fancy yarn makes for a fancy looking bit of crochet. Every row begins with a chain three turn, or you could look at it like every row ends with a chain three turn. So that chain three becomes the first stitch, the first double crochet of the next row. We're on to row three. You jump right into the middle of the first double crochet, or I should say the first V-stitch and work a double crochet V-stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet into that V-stitch. You're gonna V-stitch in every single V-stitch all the way across, all the way across, and when you get to the end of every single row from here on out, you work your last V-stitch into the V-stitch, skip that double crochet that's the end of that V-stitch, so you work your last V-stitch here, and then just spin those chain threes so that you're looking at the top of them. There's the top of the stitch. You just want to grab the top of the chain three right next to it and double crochet into that. And that's how you work your posts at the end of every row. So go ahead and work 12 rows in total of this V stitch pattern. So we've just begun row three and you want to work 12 rows in total. And I'll catch up with you in a few rows. Once you've completed 12 rows, and it's pretty easy to count, you just want to pick a V stitch in the bottom here and just count directly up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's 12 rows of the V stitch. We're going to fasten off, so we're going to snip our yarn. Fasten off, and you're going to take a moment to weave the tails in of your little come here, needle. Both ends. So you've got two long tails. You're just going to sort of weave them down and back and forth 
through some of the stitches of the row that it's the closest to. And you're just going to pick up little bits of loops Don't pull too tight because you don't want it to be pulled out of alignment. And then you're just going to double back over top and work back through the same sort of stitches and sets of loops. And that should lock your yarn in place. You want to do that to both tails. Once you have your tails woven in, the next thing you want to do is separate the top of your, or the last row of your scarf into three even sections. It's really easy. You're just going to count in 27 V stitches. So start counting 27 V-stitches all the way to your 27th. So mark the 27th V-stitch with a little marker. And then you're going to do the same thing from the other end. You're going to count in 27 V-stitches all the way from the other end and mark the 27th V-stitch. And that will leave you with 27 V-stitches in the middle of your scarf. So 81 V-stitches in total, divide by three, and each section has 27 V-stitch motifs in it. We're gonna build a few extra rows in the middle section, so the middle 27 uh, V-stitches of our scarf to kind of beef up the hood a little bit before we add our border. So we're gonna take our yarn, we're gonna make a slip knot. You're going to grab your scarf and you've got your 27th stitch marked. You're going to move to the one right next to it, so number 28. You're going to join your yarn with a slip stitch right in the middle of that 28th V stitch. You're going to chain three. Chain three counts as a double crochet. And we're going to do that very familiar V stitch pattern all the way across the rest of those 26 V stitches and in the 26th V stitch, so the V stitch before we get to the other marked one, so this one here, we're going to end with a double crochet. So we've joined our yarn with a slip stitch, chained three in that 28th V stitch, and now you're just going to V stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet as normal into each of those V stitches all the way across that middle section until you get across to the V-stitch just before your other stitch marker. I've worked 25 V-stitches in total, and I've arrived at the V-stitch that's just before the marked one. So into this last V-stitch, we're going to just double crochet once. So we double crocheted in the first V-stitch, we worked a V-stitch into each of the next 25 V-stitches, and then we worked a double crochet into the 27th V-stitch. So there's a post on either end, just like the regular pattern, and there's V-stitches in between. You can take out your little stitch markers now, they don't need to be there. And now we're going to work three more rows of the same pattern. So we're going to chain three, turn our work, And you're going to work a V-stitch into each of those 25 V's from the row before. And when you get back to the chain three that began the previous row, you're going to work a double crochet into the top of it. But I'll catch up with you when we get there. Once you've worked a V-stitch or double crochet, chain one, double crochet into each of those 25 V-stitches, that brings you back to the chain three that began the little extra section that we're building here for the hood. So you're going to roll your chains forward, find the top of the chain three, and just double crochet into the top of it. So now you've got two rows of extra V-stitch sitting on top of the middle section of your scarf. You're going to work two more rows like that. So chain three to begin, turn your work, and start v-stitching or double crochet, chain one, double crochet, into each of those middle 25 v's, double crochet into the top of the chain three, 
from the previous row and then chain three, turn and work one more row. Once you've completed four rows, so you've got, we've joined, we've worked a whole row of the V-stitch and worked three more rows on top of that. You work your last double crochet into the top of the chain three from the previous row and we're not cutting our yarn. You're just going to chain one now and turn your work. And you're going to take the other edge, so find the other edge of that last row and bring the two edges together. So you've folded your scarf in half. It looks something like this. So here are the longer pieces down here. Your scarf is folded perfectly in half and the two middle section ends meet up and the two longer sections are sort of out to the side. What we're going to do is create a seam now for the back of our hood. So we've chained one, we've turned, and we're going to just slip stitch all the way through both sets of stitches all the way up. So the first thing we want to do is grab the top of this chain three here on side one and go all the way through the top of the double crochet from side two. So the first stitch can be a little funny. We're going to slip stitch through both of those edges together. Then it's just sort of a matter of pairing up your stitches. So you can pair up the V stitches, concentrate on one set of three as we go. So we're going to slip stitch through the next pair. So there's the next pair of stitches. Just slip stitch right through the chain one space and then slip stitch through the next set of double crochets and just continue along in that manner. So it's a slip stitch through a set of double crochets, slip stitch through the center chain one spaces of the V stitches, and then slip stitch through the final set of double crochets in that V stitch. So if you approach it sort of three stitches at a time, You'll be able to keep both sides even and you'll just slip stitch not too tight all the way back across that shorter edge right up until you get to the end. So once you've worked through every set of V-stitches all the way to the end, the curve or the top seam is actually one V-stitch folded in half. So all you're going to do is just slip stitch through the tops of the two double crochets that make up that last V-stitch. And don't worry about the little hole at the top. Now we can fasten off our yarn. And take a moment to weave in any short tails. So the short tails you might have from the beginning of your little extended piece and of course this tail that's left behind after we've seamed up the back end of our scarf. So once you've woven in your ends, there's the inside of our seam. You can sort of see the slip stitching running across it. That's the inside of our hood. So we're going to turn our hoods right side out now. And all of that stitching disappears. So you've got a nice neat seam running up the right side, outside of your hood. Now, all we want to do is put a little more V stitching all the way around it to just give it a little more width and to finish off all of our edges nice and neatly. First, we want to make sure we're all starting in the same place. So you're going to set your scarf down so that your hood is folded. There's the inside seam, this is the outside, and here's the two long ends sort of hanging out the bottom. So we're looking at the right side and then this is the underside. We're going to pick up the part of our scarf that's on the left and we're going to look at the we're going to look at it upside down. So this is the foundation chain that we're looking at. So we're looking at the underside of it. We're going to join our yarn down here. So grab your yarn and your hook and we're going to make a slip knot. 
We're looking at the underside now. So this is the underside of our foundation chain row. Our scarf is upside down, and if I hold it up close, you can see that that's a V-stitch, and that's a V-stitch, but it's upside down. So we're going to go back to the beginning of the row and find the first V-stitch we made. If your V-stitch looks like it's the bottoms are a little bit separated, don't worry about it. You just want the first one, so not the bottom of the chain three or the double crochet. You want the bottom of the actual V-stitch. We're going to join our yarn with a slip stitch into that underside of a V-stitch. We're going to chain four, and this chain four counts as a chain three or a double crochet chain one, I should say. So the chain four counts as a double crochet chain one, and we're going to double crochet into the same place. So what we're doing is starting with a V-stitch. So now there's a V-stitch sitting opposite the V-stitch going in the other direction. All you're going to do across the long bottom of your scarf is find the underside of each V-stitch from row one and work double crochet, chain one, double crochet into the chain directly opposite it. So not the big spaces, find the chain that you originally worked a double crochet, chain one, double crochet V-stitch into and do the same thing going along underneath. So you'll have something that looks like that. Once you've worked a V-stitch across the underside of your foundation chain row, so a V-stitch opposite the V-stitches from row one, that brings us to the end. You've worked your last V-stitch opposite the V-stitch from row one, and there's the chain one, or the chain three, or the, the double crochet post at the end. So this is going to actually mark the start of all the V-stitches we work up the short edge of our scarf. But in order to get there, we want a little bit of a corner. So all we're going to do is chain two. And that chain two is just going to turn the little corner for us. And now you're going to take your scarf, you're going to hold it so that you're looking at the short edge. And into that space, which is the space between the chain three and the V-stitch from row one, you're going to work a V-stitch. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet. Now you're going to work your way up so skip the little spaces, look for the big spaces. The big spaces are caused by the double crochet or the chain three worked at the edge of every row. And you're just going to double crochet, chain one, double crochet into each of those big spaces going up the side of your scarf. It's the short end of your scarf. So work a V-stitch around the chain three or the double crochet post at the edge of each of those rows. Once you've worked a V-stitch around each of those chain threes or double crochet posts at the edge of every row, so that's your short edge or the edge of the end of your scarf, that brings us up to the top corner. So if we look at it, this is the twelfth row of the scarf we worked. So there's the post at the end, there's the first V-stitch. So into this space we're going to work a V-stitch, so we're still working around the double crochet or the chain three that creates the post at the edge of a row. So that's the edge. Now we want to chain two, just to sort of turn the corner a little bit. And now we're working up across the top of row 12 of our scarf. So we're just going to continue the V-stitch. Find the next V, work a V-stitch into the top of it, just like you would if you were working the plain old pattern. Find the next V-stitch, work a V into that, and I'll catch up with you once we get to the hood. Once you've worked a V-stitch into the top of those 27 V-stitches across the first half of side or row 12, that brings you up to where we started to build up the back end of our scarf for the back of our hood. So there's a chain three that comes out of the middle of a V-stitch. Don't miss it. It helps if you count your 25, or your, I should say your 27 V-stitches all the way along, so that when you get there, you're just going to, you're not going to use that V-stitch. So I'm going to pull it back up. Here's the V-stitch from row 12, number 28, that we started to chain out of. So we joined our yarn in there. 
you're going to skip over that V stitch and you're going to work your way around that chain three. So it's almost like you're working the short edge of your scarf. You're going to so skip this V stitch, work a V stitch around that chain three instead. And then work a V stitch around the chain threes or the double crochet posts at the edge of those rows. Now we did four rows, so you should have eight edges to work around before you get back over to the other side where row 12 picks up again. All right, here's a look at it. We've worked a V-stitch across the top of row 12. We got up to where we split to add a little more to the base of the hood. Skipped the V-stitch that had the chain three in it. Worked around the chain three instead. So there's a V-stitch, two, three, four V-stitches. There's the seam in the middle back of our hood. And then a V-stitch around the edge post of each of those four rows on the other side. That brings us, if we twist our scarf, back down the other side to the other or the third, the third, the last third of row 12 of our scarf. So we've worked a V stitch around that post that's in the middle of that 27th or if you're counting in from the other side, the 28th V stitch of row 12. You're going to skip it, go to the next actual V stitch in row 12 and this should be number one of 27 V-stitches to finish off the row. So that's one, you'll have 27 more V-stitches until you get all the way over to the other corner. And that's how you work around the back of the hood. There's the bottom edge of the back of our hood. Our little turn as we worked a V-stitch into each of those 27 V-stitches across the top of what was row 12. That brings us up to the last V-stitch. In the last V-stitch of row 12, there's the space between the last V-stitch and the post. We're going to chain two just to turn the corner. And now we're working across the other short edge of our scarf. So we're going to work a V-stitch, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, around the chain three or double crochet post that marks the edge of each of those rows. So find the next post, work a V-stitch around it, and once you've worked a V-stitch around each of those posts, that'll bring us right back to the beginning of our little border. Once you've worked a V-stitch around each of those edge posts, that brings you down to the bottom and right back to where we began. You might even still have your little short tail hanging there. There's the chain four that we began with and the double crochet that created the first V stitch. We're going to chain two. That will be our last little corner. And then you're going to join with a slip stitch into the third chain. So it might help if you find that double crochet, skip the chain that's right next to it, and then join your yarn or join your hook in the top of that third chain and just slip stitch to join. And that's it. You can snip your yarn, fasten off, and weave both of those little tails in. <laughs> this is one of the prettiest things I think I've ever made for myself. And yes, I'm keeping it. This isn't going anywhere. This, and nobody's getting this for Christmas except me. I am keeping this hooded scarf and I'm going to wear it everywhere. In fact, I'm probably going to make another few. <laughs> one to match every one of my moods. <laughs> anyway, we hope you enjoyed making this scarf along with us today. And again, if you want to check out the Lion Brand Shawl and a Ball for yourself, we've got the link in the description box down below. We've also got a written copy of this pattern available in our Etsy shop. The link to that is in the description box as well, along with a whole lot of other information. So feel free to click on all those links and check everything out. We will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay magical, and have a wonderful week, everybody. Bye. Hi, everybody. 
Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.